Okay, so in this lab here, we're going to be determining the enthalpy of solution using a calorimetry experiment. The salt that we're examining here is ammonium chloride. I've already removed the mass of the paper here, so this is 6.16 grams of the powder, plus or minus 0.01 gram. We're going to be dissolving this powder here into 50.0 milliliters, plus or minus 0.5 milliliters of water. Uh, standing it here is actually a metal temperature probe here. It's hooked up to our GLX sensor here. Basically, our GLX device here can actually sample the temperature in real time for us, plotting as a graph for us. So, just to begin here, we're going to press play to start a run. It's already going to be starting to sample the temperature here. Uh, if you can see the scale there, we're roughly about 20 degrees here. I just want to give it a certain baseline so we can get a starting temperature reading. Uh, it might be nice here to press F1 to auto scale it, just to um, make sure it zooms in a little bit for us here. When we get a fairly steady baseline, all we're going to have to do is just toss the powder into the styrofoam cup. Uh, I'm going to be using a wooden stir stick here. We're also using a styrofoam cup to try to keep uh, all the heat changes inside this um, uh, apparatus here. Definitely one major source of error in this will be heat loss in the environment out the top because there's no lid. So I'm just going to slide this powder in and then just uh, do a very gentle stirring with a wooden stir stick here. We're going to monitor what happens uh, to the temperature as time goes on. So I'm just going to pour that in there, do a very gentle stir. I just want to dissolve the powder. You notice that the GLX probe here is um, sensing a decrease in temperature and again it's plotting our temperature um, in real time for us there we can later on we can export the graph uh, so any measurements that we need to make later on uh, we can read it directly so you don't need to stir it too vigorously here but what we're looking for here is uh, we see that the temperature is actually cooled down. So this has been an endothermic reaction. It's actually cooled down. Based on the graph here, we're looking at about maybe 14 degrees or so. And I'm just going to let this uh, run for a little bit longer here. I want to get a sense of the linear trend as it tries to equilibrate back to room temperature. And that way we can do some uh, extrapolating later on. When we're done with this run here, we're just going to press the play button again just to stop it. Okay, and then I'm going to set up for trial two, and then you can actually uh, export this data here via USB, uh, and then we can analyze it uh, later on. Thanks, guys. All right, so continuing with our experiment here, this is our second trial of dissolving ammonium chloride, hoping to find the enthalpy of solution. Uh, again, I've set up the GLX here to plot my temperature versus time in real time. I'm going to press play to start a run. Uh, give it a little while just to sample a baseline, just to get a sense of what the starting temperature is going to be. You can again press F1 to auto scale it to help zoom it in there for you. Uh, again, I have 50.0 plus or minus 0.5 milliliters of water, just like before. Uh, in this case here, I've weighed out my mass, 6.52 plus or minus 0.01 grams of ammonium chloride. Uh, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly drop in this powder here. Uh, we're going to have a wooden stir stick ready to help with the dissolving. And then we're going to be monitoring uh, on the GLX sensor in real time what happens to this temperature. So let's just slide it in here. Do a little bit of dissolving here. Again, we saw with the first trial here, ammonium chloride here is endothermic. That's why you see that the solution is dissolving. If you make some qualitative observations in the styrofoam cup here, you notice uh, some of the powder is actually sitting at the top. That's the part that I want to just uh, uh, dissolve down. Sometimes if you don't have very consistent stirring or uh, the powder sort of dissolves in chunks, uh, you're going to get a uh, little blips here and there uh, on the graph. But we're going to try to minimize those by uh, mixing the solution as the reaction occurs. 
eventually we're going to export this graph here even though it's going to take some in this case here it's been about 40 probably about 60 seconds for the reaction to finish here we're going to be doing some extrapolation and trying to figure out what minimum temperature would this have hit if the reaction had all happened uh, all at one time instant so uh, again i'm just going to let this uh, keep reacting there again remember for a calorimetry experiment the biggest source of error is heat loss to the surroundings so even though we've done our diligence in uh, using a styrofoam cup here, using a wooden stir stick instead of a glass stir stick here, one major error would definitely be uh, not having a lid uh, on top of the styrofoam cup. Okay. Again, we're going to let it uh, steady out a little bit here. I want to get a sense of it trying to calibrate back to room temperature. Uh, that slope is what we're going to need to actually do the extrapolation later on. So let me just show you roughly uh, how do we uh, sort of transfer the data. Uh, we press play earlier to start the run here, we'll press play to end the run. If at this point here you press play again, it's going to start a totally new run. If you have multiple trials here lined up, you can actually have all the runs here on the same file. Uh, let's say you've sort of saved down those runs there, you can press the home button, it'll bring up this menu. Uh, our earlier graph here would be in this lower left uh, option here. Uh, we actually want to uh, default right now at the data files, we're going to use check mark uh, just to um, uh, uh, enter in any data here. So far my file here is unsaved, so I'm going to hit F4. F4 will give me a few options. We're going to choose down to option number two to save as. Uh, this is the really old school texting, so in this case, uh, let's say I want to type in A, I need to press the number eight, but I, to toggle between letters, I need to press the eight multiple times. So earlier I called it A1 for ammonium chloride trial number one. Uh, let's do A2 here, so I'm just going to keep pressing this. So we have A, give it a second here, I want to get to two. So I'm just going to keep pressing the 2 here. I don't know if you remember the olden days when texting was like this, but we have A2 there. Uh, we're going to press check mark just to save down the file, and there we go, it's saved. If I want to start a new file, I'm going to press F4, and then use the option of new file. In this case here, I might want to copy this file or copy all the files over to a USB. I have a USB that's attached to the right-hand side here. Uh, you can press copy file, so I'm copying this file here. Right now it's stored in the internal memory, internal RAM. You can copy it over to the flash drive or you can toggle over to the USB uh, to copy the file over. Okay. Depending on the size of your USB here, it does scan through your files. So if you have a really large USB and there's lots of files, it might take a little while for you to toggle over. Uh, but once it's clicked over there, you just press check mark and that way it will copy the file over. All right, thanks guys. All right, so we're going to switch over to talk about calcium chloride. Uh, we can also determine this enthalpy using calorimetry. Uh, again, I filled up a styrofoam cup here with 50.0 plus or minus 0.5 milliliters. The salt that we're going to dissolve, notice that the calcium chloride uh, appears as little uh, pebbles here. I've already weighed out just the powder itself, so 5.72 plus or minus 0.01 grams. I have my temperature probe here connected to the GLX. It's going to sample this in real time. I'm ready to start a run here, so I'm just going to press play. Give it a couple of seconds just to get a baseline there. If at any point you want to auto scale it here, you just press F1 uh, to zoom in a little bit. Uh, again, I have my I wooden splint here ready uh, to do any uh, stirring. I want to minimize any heat loss if we can. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this in here and we'll have a look at what happens. So fold this. That gets in. Again, just doing a little bit of stirring. You'll notice different from the ammonium chloride, instead of the surrounding temperature going down, uh, we see that this one here is actually heating up. And you just want to gently stir here. Hopefully the dissolving is fairly constant. We are looking for the final temperature that we can get to by dissolving this amount of mass. Because the solute is actually dissolving into liquid, uh, when you do your calculations with MC.T, it's good to add uh, the solute's mass to the solvent. Okay. Hopefully you can see from the GLX here, we're a little over 32 degrees now. It's just about to peak here. Even qualitatively here, I don't really see any of those uh, little pebbles uh, inside the styrofoam cup. That's an indication that the reaction is done, all the powder has been dissolved. Let the temperature just equilibrate for a little while.
later on when we talk about enthalpy of solution, we're going to call this an infinitely dilute solution. Basically, all the ionic lattice has been completely ripped apart. All right, so it looks like our temperature is steadied up there. Um, we're about 34 degrees. Again, we can export the graph later on to do uh, another analysis. So I'm just going to press play to stop this run. Okay. I'm going to raise my thermometer here. Uh, we're going to run through trial two of this here. Instead of creating a new file like I did last time, I have a fresh cup of water here. Uh, again, this one here has been measured to be 50.0, plus or minus 0.05. I'm going to lower the temperature sensor in as well. This time, because I didn't start a new file, when I press play, again, I'm just going to sample a baseline here. Don't worry, your other data here hasn't been erased or anything like that. This is just going to be the second run on the same file. So give it a sense just to equilibrate here. We want to get a steady baseline to begin with. And then for this one, uh, again, I've weighed out the mass, uh, subtracting the mass of the paper. Uh, we're looking at 6.04 plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. Okay. So sometimes it takes a little while to equilibrate here. I'm going to let it steady out first. It's already sampling the temperature uh, in real time. So like, that's flattened out here. So here we go, one last trial. This is calcium chloride again. I'm gonna steadily drop that in. Make sure all the little pebbles go in. Okay. And again, using a wooden stir stick here, I'm going to start helping the powder dissolve. Again, it is an exothermic reaction. Whenever they talk about uh, temperature, uh, we always think of ourselves as surroundings. So although the particles are actually losing energy, the potential energy diagram is going down, the surroundings is actually getting hot. We are never microscopic enough to be uh, feeling what the system is doing, but we just infer that the system is opposite of what we are. So for this trial here, we're going to use the new uh, TNSO. Again, it's exothermic, so we are heating up. Once this has been fully dissolved here, it's going to peak in temperature. We're going to give it a little bit more time. And later on, when we take the graph, we can do some extrapolation to figure out how hot could it have been if the reaction had all happened uh, in an instant. I don't really feel any pebbles on the bottom of the styrofoam cup anymore. It's an indication that the pebbles have been dissolved. I also notice that the temperature is uh, steadying out on the top, so it should be pretty close to done. You'll notice that it does say run number two, so these, uh, both of these runs here will be on the same graph. When you are done, again, you press play to stop the run. Again, just walk you through how you're going to save it. You press home. We're already on data files, we press check mark. I open a new file here, this is calcium chloride, so maybe I'm going to put C. So I'm going to press uh, F4. We're going to choose down to the option of save as, that way I can type in a name. So we're going to go C, okay. C1, C2, whatever you want to name it here. When you're done with the name, you press check mark. Right now it's stored on the internal memory again. You can press F4, copy this file over from the internal RAM, and then again over to USB, and we'll export it from there. Thanks, guys.